Hello and welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney. This is the spot. For real. This is the place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses, well, they're never dull. Welcome, brains. What an amazing, unselfish gift of love. And you two are pretty much strangers. Could you tell me a little bit, fair how you met Allison? Um, I used to work in the security department here at the Miramar Exchange. And Allison at the time was working at a different building. It was the brig. And she used to come in and to retrieve supplies, money, whatever she needed over there at the brig. And every time I saw her, we just started talking, you know, getting to know each other. And she always had a book in hand. And I would always ask her what she was reading. I was fascinated by her accent. And I could tell just by our conversation that this, this woman, she's well-educated. And... Um, just someone that I wanted to get to know. And then she left for Iraq and she was gone for a long time. And when she came back, she then worked in the store. I worked in a different department and we got to know each other even more because we saw each other more often. And so how did you end up finding her to be a perfect match for you for a kidney transplant? I did not know that she would be a good match, but she we both had the same primary physician. Word kind of got out that, you know, Farrah's ill, there's something wrong with Farrah. And when she found out that I had renal failure, she then had offered to me to be a donor. And at the time, I didn't know if she was going to be a match or not, but I was just so happy that I really didn't even ask. Wow. She just offered. Wow. And um, from there, we got the process started about you know her taking the class, finding out what her blood type is, would it be compatible to mine, and we really. Sh we really should have had this transplant three years ago, but um, I fell ill. I got bad on, I was on the operating table ready to have a procedure and my kidneys decided to shut down at that time. And um, the doctor says, we're gonna have to put a hold on everything and we need to get you started on dialysis. Oh my God. And from there with dialysis, uh, my health has been a roller coaster of highs and lows and just, the beginning of this year, um, they gave me the go-ahead and said, you're ready to have the transplant again. Let's get the ball rolling with Allison. Allison, Allison, Allison. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You are amazing. I think How so. in the... <laughs> we think so, too. Yes. How in the world did you just feel so comfortable and relaxed with donating an active organ in your body? Who does that? I could answer that, but I don't think the radio wants to hear it. Um, I have volunteered as a broken donor for years. It makes sense to me to give the organs away, those that I can, whilst I'm alive, and they can have an impact on somebody's life than to wait until I die. One of the things that occurred to me today, this morning, was you had asked me about ethnicity and mentioning ethnicity. And I've said to you, I am a West Indian. In the truest sense of the word. I was born in one country, grew up in another country. My parents were from different countries. Their parents were from different countries. I am a West Indian. Unfortunately, in at least three of the countries that I can claim, they're all now having this racial birth and everybody suddenly can't talk to everybody else. Well, in the West Indies, black is married to white is married to Chinese is married to Indian or Portuguese or French or Creole. White is married to Chinese, Indian, we're all mixed up. And the Indian would be Indian as of West Indies Indian or Indian from India, Pakistan. Which are indigenous or tribal people. So we're all mixed up any which way you want to look at it. So my giving a kidney to somebody 
really can't be that strange when I consider that in Jamaica we found sickle cell anemia, which is a black person's disease. Right, I did a show on that as in well. In a couple of Chinese people. So, somebody was doing something somewhere. <laughs> so, Allison, tell me, what is your motivation? What, what, what's driving you to do this while you're alive? My motivation is that this is something I was raised to do from I was a child. My parents were both involved in the community. My father's a judge, my mother's a social worker. We were raised to think of other people. Why this is so important is not because I'm a glory hound and I want everybody to say, oh, Alison is wonderful. I'm not. I'm a god-awful human being at the best of days. <laughs> However, when Robin Roberts got sick the second time and came on the air and said, look, colored people step forward. We need to register for bone marrow transplants. She was very fortunate. Her sister was her transplant donor. Right. She was very, very fortunate because if her sister had not matched her, we might not yet have Robin Roberts. And I'm sorry, I happen to like Robin Roberts. I could not, because of age, register. I would have to go through a great deal more testing for them to find out if my bone marrow would match anybody else. But I'm a West Indian. I'm so mixed up ethnically that uh, whether you're black, white, green, or red stripes, it's not going to make any difference to me. I can donate to others. It would be unheard of, I think, for anybody from the West Indies not to do this. It is very different in the United States. How in the so? United States, everybody separates ethnically. You can only have white donors or black donors or Mexican or Asian. Excuse the phrase, please. Bullcrap. You're a human being. You have something that can help somebody else. Offer it with love. No strings attached. It can help you. Please take it. Oh, how beautiful. Mr. Quilty, thank you for joining us in our discussion on kidney transplants and donor donations. Can you tell me how you felt when you found out that Allison was going to donate her kidney to Farah? Well, as a father, as a parent, it actually made me cry. I, I'm not a man that likes to share that, but it did. And uh, the first day I met Allison, she uh, always had a smile on her face, had a great sense of humor. Pretty broad, pretty dry, very English, <laughs> you know. But that's the kind of humor that I like. But uh, they're just good souls walking the the earth right now. And Alice's is one of them. They're people that love to give. And Allison's a giver, and you know, we never know when we're going to cross paths with them. But my family was fortunate enough to cross paths with Allison. Brains, I'd like to thank you so much for hanging out with me on the edge on a regular basis. I really appreciate it. Um, I've had some great questions. I've got a great contest going on right now. All you need to do is like me on Facebook at A Good Person Productions. Put your like on there. I'll get your email information. I'll send you out a prize. First three people. Come on, like a sister. Because you're listening to me. I want you to like me. My Twitter is April's on the Edge. Okay? You can find me on the World Wide Web at a goodperson.biz. That's a goodperson.biz. But until we meet again, Promise me that you'll be good to yourself. Be well.